Hey guys, Ray from LoveYourRV.com. So I'm with you today for a review of this new lithium battery from a company called SOK. They've been contacting me a few times over the last few months offering one for free if I do a review. So I had a look at them and I was very intrigued by the industrial design and look of it. Also the fact that they sold raw cells and the battery management system on their site as well. So they actually are a maker of batteries. So I thought I'd give it a try and do a review. One reason is they go for a pretty reasonable price. Right now this model is going for about $620 on their website. Um, I also had them send out, they have a neat little battery uh, um, si um, system monitor there which only goes for around $35. It comes with a 500 amp shunt included with it so we'll test that as well. It'll help me test this battery. I'm going to go through charge and discharge tests and make sure the capacity is actually 100 amp hours. Um, it's comparable to the Lion Energy batteries that you know I've been running for the last year. If you haven't seen my videos on the Lion Lithium batteries I'll link to that and you can have a look. It's at loveyourrv.com slash lithium all my lithium uh, related videos you'll find there. Anyway, let's give you the spiel on this one, what they say they boast about. Uh, it comes with new grade A prismatic cells inside, not used ones. I guess some of these batteries, they will, they'll put in used cells and sell them really cheap. Uh, they're, they're rated at 4,000 cycles before they get to 80% depth of discharge, so Basically, much like the Lion, I think the Lion were 3,500 plus that they were rated for. Um, also, the, this one comes with a seven-year warranty. Um, they're, they're based in China, but they do have a USA warehouse in Michigan. Uh, what else they got here? You can series connect these up to four batteries to make a 48-volt battery, which is important. Some of them you can't do that. Uh, also, the high has a high-low disconnect uh, for temperature, low and high temperatures, and it uses two sensors, the guy said. Uh, has a heavy duty battery management system, so it's rated for uh, 50 amp charge or 100 amp discharge, but he said it could do 100 amp charge and 150 amp discharge, which is interesting because that was one of the perks of the Lion Energy one, is they can do 150 amps discharge rate with a lot of batteries can't. So anyway, so let's first we're going to go in a, and try a few tests on it. And then I actually think I want to, I see on the side there, there's some screws there. So maybe we can get that top off and have a peek inside. One thing that intrigued me about this battery was the case design. It was quite a bit different than most of the batteries I've seen on the market. The Lion is pretty small. It's a really small group 24 size battery. This one's a little more squat, maybe a little wider this way, but it actually is a is a metal case on it. And I really like the look of the terminals. Very industrial looking. The whole, the whole case is a very industrial looking case. Kind of like something you'd see uh, military or something like that. Kind of got an old school type handle. I haven't seen these for a while, but they work. here. It comes in at 30 pounds probably because of the metal case whereas the, the Lion is a lot lighter at 23 pounds and it has a 105 amp hour capacity compared to the 100 amp hour capacity. Okay so let's do a few tests here. First we'll do a, a charging test. This thing should be able to handle a max of 100 amps. I've got a couple chargers here. They should be able to put a significant amount of amperage into the battery. So we'll do that. We'll also do a capacity test and make sure it actually can handle the 100 amp hours that it's rated for. And then we'll do a high amperage discharge test. So let's do the charge test first and we'll use their little meter here. We'll plug in these uh, units. First we'll plug in the IntelliPower and check out the amperage. So we're putting in 37 amps with that. And I also have an IOTA DLS55X that uh, a viewer was kind enough to send me. He didn't need it anymore, so we'll plug that in. 
Now we're up over 54 amps. And I'll hit the boost on the IntelliPower over here. That'll raise its voltage. There we go. So we're putting in a pretty solid 76 amps. Yeah, 13.9 volts there. So it seems to be handling it no problem. Next for the capacity test, I'm going to just use this inverter and that heater to draw a load on it and run it down right to 0% capacity where it's not putting out any more power at all. Then we'll hook the chargers back up and we'll bring it back up to full charge and then we'll be able to see what the, the total capacity is as far as this meter goes. Uh, right now you can see that heater's drawn 56 amps out of it. 12.6 volts and we're sitting at 73.5 percent so we'll go all the way down to zero where it's not putting out any more current and the voltage has gone way down probably to the point where this thing shuts down somewhere around 11.5 volts and then we'll we'll turn on the chargers and let them go to this battery is fully charged and then we'll see what the, the total percentage readout is. That'll give us an indication of its total capacity. So far this meter seems to work quite well. I, I took my uh, multimeter and my clamp-on amp meter and compared it as far as the values go. And they were pretty close. They're a little off here and there, but you got you know different wiring and voltage drops and stuff. So I have a pretty good confidence in this meter. It came with a, with a nice 500 amp shunt and it has a pretty neat little readout on it so I think this thing goes for about 35 bucks which is a pretty good sweet deal for uh, the functionality of it it's a lot better than your standard just you know voltmeter so I decided to crank the heater one notch and this thing's putting out close to its 1000 watt capacity this inverter and you can see we're putting out 85.5 amps out of the battery battery sitting at 12.36 volts so it's handling the load pretty easily okay so I ran it flat and I've been charging it up with this little iota charger here it's actually worked quite well uh, it isn't a lithium charger but it has the iota IQ4X module in it which boosts up the voltage it actually has worked quite well. It's been putting in a solid 52 amps into the battery and it's just reached 100 percent and see when it's charging this thing flashes if you're wondering about that and we'll just go and check the amperage still pumping in the amps and there we are 100 amp hours so this thing does have a 100 amp hour capacity and you can see the voltage has climbed up and you can see there we go the BMS just shut down the current so the battery actually turned turned off the charging which is a good to note so it does have a higher voltage cutoff once it's charged and we're at 100 percent 100 amp hours good Let's go do a, a deep discharge test. Okay, next we're going to do a heavy discharge test. So I've got a couple inverters set up here on a little test bed. A couple 1000 watt inverters. They're supplying a, a little heater and a heat gun so I can crank up the wattage there. Uh, to measure it, I have my meter across the battery terminals and I've got the SOK uh, meter here set for amperage so we can see how many amps it's going to be drawing. Um, so this battery, they, they rate it at about 100 amps for discharge rate, but they say it can even go to 150 amps, so it'll be interesting to test. So I'll crank up the heater here. Let's see. Go turn that on. Now we're drawing about 51 amps. Get the heat gun going. I'll turn this on. There we go. Now we're drawing right around 100 amps. 
and the voltage is 12.3 so it's doing what it's uh, advertised to do let's just crank it up a bit more I'll turn up the heat gun here okay you can see we're up over 120 amps now but the voltage is dropping quite a bit you can kind of hear the inverter complaining I'll go one more step there we go we're drawing right around 140 amps the voltage is down under 12 volts right now, so the voltage is sagging quite a bit. Could be the internal BMS and the wiring inside the battery that's causing that. But it is uh, putting out a good 140 amps there. I'm going to try one more step. I expect a shutdown here. No, it's over one, yeah, right around 150 there. You can hear my in, my inverter here is complaining because it's getting close to its low voltage. But that's pretty good. Okay, as promised, here's a look at the inside. Everything looks well laid out. I really like the case of this battery. There's your four cells down in there. And they're really securely held in place. They've got little rubber bumpers all around and clamped down. If you want a closer look at the cells, just go to their website. They have they actually sell the, the raw cells on the website there. So you can actually buy and DIY yourself. But the, the cells go for 500 bucks, whereas the whole battery goes for 620 So I don't know why a person would even want to bother. Anyway, all the hardware looks like good, good uh, steel. Look up underneath, and they've mounted the battery management system board up here and it's got a huge uh, aluminum heat sink on it the posts look really nice I really like the post design of this battery you can see it's pretty heavy steel there the only negative I, I found on this battery so far and uh, it was when it really was pulling high amperage the voltage dropped and I think it's probably to do with they're only using two 8 gauge wires here to uh, come from the cells through the BMS and out whereas I know when I had the the line apart they used four so I think these guys could actually do better if they doubled that up a bit let's turn it on its side give you a little better look yeah that's a really large uh, BMS board there and it helps that it's everything's mounted on metal so it can conduct the, the heat away. Same with the batteries. Any heat can be conducted out of the out of the box. They actually have a video on how they make this. It shows their machines stamping it out. Well, there you go. That's my initial look at, test, and what I, I kind of feel about this SOK battery. I've put it in my uh, battery bay here and I'm going to use it uh, over the summer here. Maybe come back in a couple months and let you know how how it's gone long term. Uh, if anything crops up, I'll let you know. But uh, so far it seems like a, a pretty decent uh, battery for the price. Um, a few of the pros for it is it is a little cheaper than some of the other name brand ones that are out there right now. Say the Lion or the Battleborn or the Relyon. Uh, it does uh, say it has four to eight thousand cycles lifespan that they're they're touting, and it's got the seven year warranty, which is better than a, a lot of the really cheap end uh, batteries. Uh, the case, I really like the case design um, with the metal case and the really good uh, terminals there. Uh, some of the dislikes I have are the way the voltage sagged when it was pulling a heavy load, and I think that's to do with the the, the lines on inside the cables on the inside just aren't aren't big enough and capable enough. That's just my amateur opinion on it. Uh, and also, this is a newer company, so not so much as known about them. Here's their website here. You can go and, and check that out. Uh, they don't appear to have much of a North American presence. They're, they're out of China. Uh, they do have a U.S. warehouse in Michigan, and the guy says they're looking around for a Canadian one right now to be able to distribute it in Canada. Uh, they're on both Amazons. Uh, here we go on the Amazon.ca, not available yet. Uh, they say the price is going to be 9.75 Canadian dollars. 
They also have a plastic case one for a little cheaper, uh, or you can buy the cells, straight up cells for 700. Then we go over to the US site, 620 is the current price. Um, they also have the cells for sale for 500, the plastic case there, 520. They have a, a 12 volt, 200 amp hour one, looks like 1,150, or you can buy the battery management system. So there you go. Um, like I say, I'll come back after I've used it for a while and, and give you an update. Till next time, it's Ray from loveyourv.com. Thanks for watching, everyone. Cheers.